This is a Talk Station original podcast. Hello, welcome to the Paper Boys podcast. I'm JJ Smith. And I'm Zach Nally. We're reporters with the Carrick County News Times. We are joined in studio by Dustin LaBelle and Colby Carino and joined by a phone, Kayla Marie. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. So you'll find these three on any given final Friday of every month in Newport as members of the Premier Wrestling Federation. Now, we're not talking about, like Zach and I, the wrestling that we're used to covering is crossface and wrist control and back points and three too many periods. That is, that is not the wrestling we're talking about here, is it, Dustin? Oh, no, no, sir. <laughs> what, are, what is the kind of wrestling we're talking about here? Uh, we're, we're talking about professional wrestling, uh, much akin with like you see on a, a Monday Night Raw, World Wrestling Entertainment, and, and similar companies like that. That's right here local. And how long has the Premier Wrestling Federation been a thing? Um, this is about 20, 20 years. years, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's been around, uh, around a whole while. And where is it located, and where do they put on events? So we originally started uh, in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and then in 2015, we started uh, running events in Hubert, North Carolina, at the the Hubert Bingo Hall, if, if you know where that is. <laughs> it is now a jujitsu place, but um, we then we started the school, and uh, we've been going strong, strong since then in North Carolina. What, what's the connection from taking it from Pottstown to Hubert? That seems very random. So uh, that, <laughs> it's, it's because the uh, Premier Wrestling Federation is a product of my father, Steve Carino, okay. who is uh, also a professional wrestler and a current coach and producer for WWE and NXT. So um, uh, the Premier Wrestling Federation kind of followed him down here. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It Im- immigrated from Pennsylvania from to North Carolina along with him, huh? Oh, yes. Uh, We're all transplants. <laughs> <laughs> And how long have we been holding events in Newport? Uh, we've had events in Newport starting right after COVID, so probably about the last three years, okay. three and a half about. That's every last Friday. Are there, are there other events that are being held at specific times in certain towns, like the last Friday in Newport? So Premier Wrestling Federation, uh, we also have Generation Premier, which is going down every first Thursday of the month. That's like a showcase for the students of the Carolina Wrestling Academy. And um, then... Our, us as wrestlers too we have our own like independent schedules where we'll go and travel every weekend or sometimes even during the week like i wrestled 16 times in the month of april Gosh. yeah wow it was a it was a lot it's a lot <laughs> on my body a little bruised up my may's looking a little bit lighter so uh, but it was how, how do y'all put these events on in terms of like funding like uh who puts it on uh we do it's it's funded by this the school so like we we charge like a fee for training for the coaches and uh for the training just like a gym and like personal training and then uh that and we sell tickets to the events too and we'll bring in uh people like the fan favorites like bojack and diego hill who are like some of the local names that uh inspire everyone to come in and then, like just all this last show we had a former wwe tag team champion paul london come all the way from california wow that's awesome yeah so 16 is a lot. What's, what's a normal month for you? Uh, a normal month is about two or three times every weekend. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm a wrestler, so apologies for the math. <laughs> but that's probably like, what, uh, 12 to 15 times a, a month. Okay. Well, how about you, Dustin? How often are you wrestling? Um, it kind of depending on the month, I'm, I'm sliding into a weekly schedule. So I'm okay. getting in there two to six times a month. Just okay. kind, of, kind of depends what's going on. How about you, Caitlin? I'm right there with Colby. I like to abuse my body as much as possible. So I try to be booked every day of the weekend, multiple times as possible, um, hitting the road as much as possible. And what can people expect when they come to a Premier Maritime Federation event? Uh, they can expect to see you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the unexpected? Yeah, exactly. No, the sure. unexpected. But uh, we like to present a variety of styles, um, whether you like high-flying wrestling or the big strong men going at it, or you want to see the ladies go at it, or you want to even see the ladies mix it up with men. That's what that's what a lot of what Caitlin Marie does is a lot of intergender wrestling, okay. and we like to like uh, we we like to be progressive in empowering it at the PWF and make sure that uh, you know like that. I feel like. It's, we don't want to put limits on anyone who's a wrestler. If, if Whether you're male, female, we're all just wrestlers. 
Is there any towns that are really good wrestling towns that you really should, the crowd show up better than others? Oh man, well uh, honestly, North Carolina is just a really good wrestling state. Like uh, even in the smallest uh, towns in North Carolina, uh, you'll you'll see people come out in droves. Like uh, just last Sunday, I was in Statesville, North Carolina, which is like I'm not sure if you guys have ever been sure. to Statesville, oh, yeah. a little farm town, <laughs> but there was six, seven hundred people packed in a high school gymnasium, and it was it was wild to see. I'm sure that's great as performers to get a chance to to have people be excited about what you're doing and what you've trained for and what you enjoy doing. Absolutely, yeah. Like uh, all of these towns, people in North Carolina love wrestling. Um, so you, you come out, there's already an energy, mm-hmm. right? People are already cheering their, or booing, depending on what's, <laughs> what's happening, right? Um, there's a lot of uh, crowd interaction. How about you, Caitlin? Have you found some towns better than others? No, I, thankfully, I don't know if it's just my sparkling personality, but uh, I tend to kind of have a really good time everywhere I go. I love to go to new places because you get to, like, experience crowds you've never experienced. Like, for example, this past week, and I just wrestled in South Carolina um, at a bar called the Windjammer, and we actually wrestled, put the ring on the sand. And I think they had over 700 people there, and they were, like, on balconies of bars. They were on the beach with us. And it's just, like, wild that, like, you... I mean, growing up, I go to the beach all the time, and I watch wrestling all the time, but I never thought, man, let's put a wrestling ring on a beach and have all these people come out and just have a good time. So it's just really cool to see it just everywhere in these places you wouldn't even expect to even know that people even hosted wrestling shows. And, Caitlin, you talked about how often you're wrestling. What kind of travel is involved for you? What what does your uh, gas bill look like at the end of the month? Oh, I love – I'm a driver. I prefer to drive. I hate driving. Let me clarify that. I hate it, but I prefer it because I just hate planes. Um, But I also don't like traveling with other people. It's one of my, like, weird things, and it's definitely not helpful on the gas tank, so I've had to learn to, like, let people into my bubble. Uh, But it's it's a lot on the vehicles. I think in one year I've put over – 40,000 miles on my car easily um, with how much I've driven on it. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot on your vehicles for sure. And Colby doesn't y'all are like shaking your head when she said 40 is that. Uh, So I'm, I'm still kind of new to this. I've I've got about 50 matches about a year in. Um, Kobe's had a lot to do with my training and my development. Uh, I'm still kind of in this proverbial 100 mile bubble, this two hour radius, um, aside from, um, you know, some other, I I travel to Maine occasionally. Um, I'll I'll be in Maine next week for, um, uh, excuse me, this weekend. Your your uh, home state. My home state. That's correct. So, um, I'll, I'll do, um, some exceptions for that, but right now I'm still kind of in that two hour bubble of, you know, Raleigh, Wilmington, Kinston, Newport. Um, that's changing soon. I'm reaching out to Rockingham. So maybe a three hour bubble Uh, that that, that'll uh, grow in the very near future for me. Um, so I'm not quite up uh, to Caitlin's numbers, (laughs) something to aspire to. How about you, Colby? What's the, what's the region you're, you're mostly confined to? Oh yeah. I just did my taxes this year and had to do the mileage for my car. Uh, I think I put 60 to 70,000 miles on my car this year. Oh, just just for wrestling. Yeah. And that's just like just from my car, not including the, when like I would drive with someone else or be flown somewhere. Oh like, uh, hopefully yeah. you drive a Toyota Corolla or something like that. <laughs> <Prius>. <laughs> yeah. it, was a, it was a Hyundai accident until that's, there I, you go. I just got it rear-ended. But now I've upgraded to the Nissan Sentra. So uh, nice, good but, on uh, mileage. You then. guys need some hybrids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at minimum, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. But yeah, we really uh, we try to get out there, and because like. It, every crowd's different, and every crowd's a, a new opportunity to market yourself to a whole brand of people. Like, um, yeah, I travel around to Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Florida, Georgia, California, Texas, Chicago. Uh, it's it's never ended. We we hit all these places. I was just in um, what was it? Evansville, Indiana. Uh, yeah, exactly. You, you'll take you, wrestling will take you to the places you never even thought existed. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I love going to all these new places and, like, and being able to meet new crowds because, you know, in North Carolina, it seems like everyone knows me. Like all the, uh, before I even come out, the fans are, are with my music and chant for me. But when I like going into these new markets and experience these, these fans who might have never uh, seen me and, um, and, and showing them what I'm all about. And it, it's, it's, it's super cool. It's, it's, it's awesome that like, I have the opportunity to, to travel around with wrestling and, um, be able to experience all these places i just confirmed a show for australia this summer and um very excited to go there for the first time yeah 
Has that been your first time in, anywhere overseas? Uh, no. Uh, so when I was a kid, I actually went a, a bunch of places overseas with my dad, who was also a wrestler. Okay. Uh, I've, I've been to uh, Japan, England, Wales, Finland. Um, yeah, I've, I've been quite a few places <laughs> with him. I'm saying we'll get into sort of origin story here, sure. but boy, that sounds like you kind of picked up the mantle there and kept it going. Oh, uh, yeah. That's I'm, a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm doing my best to... Uh, to live, to step out of my dad's shadow and, and be more than Steve Carino's son, but um, it, it, it's 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 pretty it's pretty cool having like that path cut out for me, you know. Yeah, for sure. And Caitlin, is it a thing where you're showing up on a Friday, wrestling Friday, Saturday, Sunday, leaving on a Sunday? Is it a quick turnaround? Oh yeah, I mean, just the other weekend, <clears throat> excuse me, I was in uh, New York on Friday, so I flew that morning, wrestled that night. I don't even think we left the venue until almost. Two, three in the morning, had to be at the airport by five to fly back to make it to PWF. PWF was hosting a Sean Henderson Presents that Saturday, wrestled in North Carolina. Actually stayed the night with Colby because he was gracious enough, and Ari, his wife, let me stay with them. And then drove right from there, I think it was like six hours, to my show on Sunday in South Carolina. To then drive all the way back home on North Carolina. So. It's a, it's a lot of turnaround, and that's like a better weekend where at least I'm in North Carolina and South Carolina where I have weekends. I'm in like Alabama, then New York, then Kentucky, and then like back home. So it's a, it can be a lot for sure. Hi, I'm Ty Roach, and you're listening to the Paper Boys Podcast. What would you, and this would probably be possible to, to surmise uh, Dustin, but what would you say the average ages of people in attendance? Is it from kids to gray hair? Infant to gray hair. <laughs> there, there was an infant at the last show this past weekend, so there is no age Starting boundary on this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm curious how, would you rate what, you know, these shows as family friendly? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they seem like they would be. Yes. Um, in terms of being able to sit and be entertained and enjoy something that's not you know, overtly violent or, or absolutely. Yeah. And, and with uh, premier wrestling federation, that is the product that's put on with professional wrestling in general. There is a spectrum of what that looks like. It, it can go to a violent spectrum. It can go to a really kind of goofy mm -hmm. comedy spectrum. And there's this, you know, middle ground where there's professional wrestling, right. You know, a competitive contest. So there's a, a wide range, but PWF puts on a, um, a family friendly, um, competitive contest. Colby, what would you say is the average age of the wrestlers involved in PWF? Uh, I'd probably say the average age is early to mid 20s, but we got people who are 16 all the way up to 53 training at the Carolina Wrestling Academy. Wow. And yeah, uh, and that's not even just wrestlers. There's wrestlers like George South, who is, uh, I'm not going to date him, but he's, he's in his 60s and <laughs> okay. he's still wrestling every single week weekend, multiple times a weekend. Uh, there's Action Mike Jackson in his 70s wrestling. Whoa. Jeez. Yeah. Didn't, didn't you wrestle him oh, yes. in the last year? Or I wrestled so? uh, both of them. I, 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 get, I get put with elderly people a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why. I'm sure, they'll, I'm sure they'll enjoy being called elderly. <laughs> uh, uh, hopefully they don't know what a podcast is. <laughs> right. That's a good bet. <laughs> Our advanced wrestlers. And Caitlin, how many uh, female wrestlers are there in the PWF? Uh, I mean, it, it's different every month. Obviously, every show it cycles. So there could be a show where there's, you know, just one, and then there's shows where there could be five of them in multiple okay. matches. So it really is every show is a, a different, uh, different card with different people showing up. It still sounds like it's a bit of a rarity, though, huh? Yeah, but it's also just in, just in general, when you think of, like, the pool, what you have to draw from, like, probably in general, it's probably 80% men wrestlers to 20% women wrestlers in general. So finding enough talent and also, you know, people who are another big thing is I know I love working at the PWF because they really make sure the people they bring in are well-trained people so everyone's safe. You want to make sure you're bringing in people who are, you know, you're comfortable putting other people with um, so everyone always feels comfortable to wrestle. So they definitely take their time to select them, but when they bring them in, they're confident and they put on a great show. And logistically speaking, uh, Dustin, how much is it? How much are tickets for people to go to these events? Uh, VIP, I think is 25. Yeah. Front row is 25. And then general admission is 15. How long are the shows? Uh, we try to have a runtime of two and a half hours. Well, Sometimes, that's a great deal, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes we run a little bit longer if we're if we're really feeling the show, you know. Sure. But uh, I try to shoot for that two and a half hour mark. Yeah, 
And so at Newport is the last Friday every month. What about the Carolina Wrestling Academy? Tell us about that, when that's held and what that and what's involved in that. So the, the Carolina Wrestling Academy, it's the same venue, same location, um, but that's where we train the, the next group, the next generation, the next uh, crop of wrestlers that want to see themselves in that ring. Mm-hmm. And uh, last Friday of every month, um, trains three times a week. We have a, a variety of coaches. Uh, of course, uh, Kobe is one of the coaches. Of another gentleman, Ryan Galleon, uh, our new PWF Undisputed Heavyweight Champion. He's got about 15 years in the business. Bojack, we've mentioned before, he's a PWI Professional Wrestling Illustrated Top 500 ranked wrestler, uh, and you know, so a, a very legitimate ranking. That's going to start off with guys like Roman Reigns and mm. and Cody Rhodes, and somewhere on that list, uh, you're going to find Bojack as well. Um, so the coaching staff, a lot of knowledge, and then we do have that connection through uh, Kobe alluded to his father, the WWE uh, coach, NXT um, producer. So. There's a lot of talent in the coaching pool, and that's recognized um, not just in the immediate area, but there's people that come as far as Florida. Uh, there's some regulars from Florida that, that drive up to be a part of us. Um, there's some from South Carolina. They'll drive five hours one way on a Sunday um, just to have an afternoon session with us. So we have a very unique thing here in Newport. And it's a free uh, showcase on Thursdays, is that right? First Thursday of every month. Uh, the doors are typically 7.45 p.m., 8 p.m., uh, excuse me, 8 p.m. is when doors open. Um, when the show starts, it's typically about an hour, and it's a showcase. It's an opportunity for the, the students that are ready for mm. wrestling, ready to compete. Um, they just need an opportunity. So rather than doing training that evening, we put on a show. We've got the lights. We've got announcers. We've got the music, the entrances. It is the full, full show experience for them. And you said you're pretty new to all this, just and at least compared to, to the other two. Is a Carolina Wrestling Academy, is that where you learn? Yes. Uh, primarily, the uh, majority of my training has been with uh, Carolina Wrestling Academy. And you said you're pretty new to this, though. Pretty new. Um, I don't know if you want to get into origin well, stories and background. What I've I'm curious little... is how long, like, time frame? Like, a year, two years, six months? I've, I've trained about a year and a half, coming close to two years okay. with Carolina Wrestling Academy, and I've been competing a little over a year okay so you really I mean you've got a, a really fresh first-hand look at what it's like to come in and, and get trained and see the the coaching personnel and how they're able to to show you I mean did you have any experience in it when you came on uh, I, I have a very unique background okay uh, the, the first time I attempted to get into this this arena was in uh, Japan uh, there was a local promotion um, one guy was Australian, so I knew he knew how to speak English. So I approached that gentleman, and he agreed to train me. Um, but he wouldn't train me in a professional wrestling ring. He trained me in a karate dojo. Uh, so for about a year, I was learning the, the professional wrestling in a karate dojo, literally running invisible ropes. I have videos of me just wow, whoop, 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 and then turning around. <laughs> um, so I, I I understood concepts, but I didn't know what they actually felt like. So there was a lot of pieces. <laughs> of professional wrestling I knew, and then some other fundamental things I did not. Um, so I had a very weird background. Mm. That was around the COVID time. Um, so I didn't get to be in the ring as much as I would have hoped for. COVID time, came back uh, to North Carolina, mm. uh, took a little break, and then re-engaged with Carolina Wrestling Academy and actually started training in the ring. Uh, and they, Kobe polished me up for six or seven months, and then I started taking bookings. Could be how many people are showing up on a say a monthly basis to learn how to wrestle? Uh, so we run about three classes a week, and probably each class has about ten to fifteen people in mm. it. Caitlin, did you have any experience before you came in with these guys and, and wrestling, or did you go to the uh, academy? Yeah, I was I was didn't go to the academy. I was actually trained by the very young and agile George South, um, just in case <laughs> figure out how to listen to a podcast on his flip phone. Um, <laughs> But no, I was, uh, I actually kind of started training around the same time as Justin. I was, um, I started in about 2019 and then COVID happened right after. So that kind of stopped training for a while and would say 2021 is when I started, um, really, I'd say getting out to more bookings and exploring, but yeah, no, I was training in, uh, it was called high spots. Uh, our head trainer was, uh, George South, who I love. Um, and then I met Zane Riley there, who was one of our in and out trainers, and he knew Jakob, um, who uh, is also with PWF. And then I begged and pleaded him to pull a favor for me to get on there. 
I mean, I'm glad I did because I love it there. But no, Colby has been super helpful to my career. Um, he he definitely helped train me some. And then anytime I doubt myself, he's the first one to tell me just to do it. Um, and uh, he's super great. So I feel like even though I didn't really train there, I definitely feel like it's kind of like one I would consider like a little bit of a home base for me for sure. Colby, you've been around wrestling your whole life. What's it been like to see the trajectory of it just continually getting more popular, more mainstream? Oh, I love it. It's, it's you know, I, I love it regardless of the popularity, and I've been doing this my whole life. Um, like, I went to my first wrestling show when I was three weeks old, <laughs> and uh, I, I beat my dad to that by bringing my kid to his first wrestling show at two weeks old. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, like, I actively started wrestling when I was 12 years old. So uh, I'm coming up on my 16th year in wrestling, and it's just it, it it's awesome to see like the popularity like uh, WrestleMania uh, that just passed. It, it, it's wild the pe- the people that I never thought would talk about wrestling were were calling me and being like, "Did you just watch that? That was crazy." I'm like, "I didn't even know you liked wrestling. You never talked. To me. I've been wrestling for 16 years. You never said anything to me." Yeah, it's made its way to the water coolers instead of just specific conversations yeah. between, you know, it's a, it's a marquee event when it happens and you see stories about it online and you can't yeah. help but get caught up in it. Uh, I mean, ESPN a few years ago decided they were going to start paying real attention, mm-hmm. put it in their lineup. On the, you can go to their website, you can go to Sports Center, they'll, they'll show highlights. Oh, yeah. So when it's on ESPN, you know, it's starting to go mainstream, right? It, it, it's awesome to see because, like, uh, Yes, there's a, a there's a, a stage aspect to professional wrestling, but there there's also a huge athletic aspect to it too that I think a, a lot of people like don't uh, don't realize, and it's it's it require it requires a whole it's 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 athletics, acting, um, improv. S- uh, everything that you can think of in entertainment just all put into one, and we only have one take to do it in front of a live crowd. Mm. Yes. You know? and Dustin, you were talking about some of the WWE guys you are kind of intermingling with from time to time. It's not like this is, to put a term on it, strictly amateur. This is professional and amateur kind of going back and forth in these premier wrestling federation events. Yeah, um, I, I can think of two uh, notable cases really in the past couple months. Um, I, I want to say back in December, uh, there was a wrestler who's, uh, by the name of Jay Malachi. Uh, his, I think one of his final matches on the independent scene was in our building. Um, because he had been signed to WWE. Wow. Uh, so the end of that show, um, we had uh, this rare opportunity where somebody was coming in and kind of shaking his hand, presenting him with his WWE, uh, you know, some of his new athletic gear, and then we get to send him off. Um, so now he's uh, competing as Javon Evans, I think it says yep. Javon Evans, um, making a huge impact right away. So you can watch... NXT on Tuesday nights and look and say, hey, that was that was a wrestler that was just here down the road. Um, and we had another wrestler as well, uh, Patrick Scott, who was a, a very um, persistent individual with our promotion, had his final match um, and is now a staff writer uh, with the WWE. Uh, so again, the, the level of professionalism uh, in all aspects of, of what we do in this industry is is resident here. Hey y'all, this is Carson Gray and y'all are listening to the Paper Boys Podcast. Caitlin, what's it like on any given weekend running in the same circles as someone who was maybe in a professional wrestling uh, event maybe weeks or months prior or somebody might be headed to one in, in the coming weeks or months? It's definitely exciting. I mean, I am kind of similar in that I didn't. 100% grew up watching wrestling in the era of like the big names and people say like Rick Slayer or like uh, Terry Funk or people like that so and there's like legends I'm on the show with sometimes I don't think I fully register it um, but when it are when it is people that I grew up watching it's always like almost surreal but I'm also someone who doesn't get like starstruck I'm just such a casual bro with people that I'm like hey man how's it going I saw you when I was a kid and they always love hearing that because it makes them feel really good about themselves. Um, But that's always super cool to see them feel like I watched you growing up on TV and now I'm wrestling on the same show as you and that doesn't make sense in my brain. Um, But then when you have people, like we mentioned before, like Jay Malachi, like I wrestled Jay Malachi when I think he was like 15 or 16. Um, And to see him now get signed, it's like super exciting as well because you always, that's the goal. You want to see your friends succeed. You want to see the people you're wrestling with every weekend 
you don't want to see them every weekend because you want to see them going on to bigger and better things. So it's so it's always an exciting experience, whether it's someone coming in who used to work there or somebody who you see going off there. So it's always I, I enjoy it. Who, who has made you starstruck so far in your career? No one has really starstruck me except, I would say, Trish Stratus and Lita. But I think that's just because when you think women's wrestling, like, that's, like, your your gods. Like, that's, like, ah, like, lights, I feel like, just flash behind them when they walk in a room. So, for me, it, I was, I mean, I played it cool, but deep down inside, I was like, oh, this is not real. And I don't even think I processed it until after I walked away, and I was like, no, that just happened. Um, but I think those two are probably the only two that I was like, oh, this is happening right now. How about you, Dustin? Have you been starstruck yet? Uh, I've not been starstruck yet. No, not yet. And, Colby, you've been around it for 100 years, so you probably have a ton of starstruck moments. Yeah, but it's it's really wild because I don't really get starstruck by wrestlers. I get starstruck by all the other cool things I get to do by wrestling. Like, uh, I wrestled on Warp Tour before. I've wrestled at, like, uh, I've toured with the Smashing Pumpkins. Um, I, I've wrestled at, like, so many music festivals and, like, concerts. It's, it, like, I, I, I love music. <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite things in the world. So, like... You you have something else coming up too, right? I think you just got thrown on a uh, Broadway or something? A Broadway theater. Oh or... yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm doing a musical for the first time ever. <laughs> a, a wrestling musical. What? Yeah, it's called the Last Match Experience. Um, it's going. It's touring the U.S. right now, but I'm doing it in Winston Salem on uh, May fifteenth, and um, t- yeah, I've never done a play or. But really... you mentioned it. The elements that go into what you do translates so well to something like yeah, that. Yeah, so I figured why not? Uh, yeah. I'll just jump right in. <laughs> Boy, this guy's an experienced capturer, collector, man. This guy's out here. Well, is it the opposite it's an amazing. Thing you call me because you've been around it so much, you aren't Star Trek by it because it's just all you know. Like, uh, I, I, I love wrestling so much, but, like, I try not to get starstruck because, like, uh, I feel like it impacts how I worked with, with people. Like, I never want to, like... I get to wrestle with, and like uh, I I perform with the NWA and that's where I, I'm to signed to a contract at and there I get to work with people that I, I grew up watching on TV and it's like I have to not be starstruck by these guys mm. because I have to go out there and beat them up and if I don't beat them up they're gonna be real mad at me because they're like why are you taking it easy yeah don't on take me? it yeah, yeah. You know, I've actually had so many of these like older guys like like I, I've tried to go light on them because like you know they're. I don't want to hurt them. Like I respect them so much. Sure. And they come to the back so mad because I didn't beat them up. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Well, I guess I got to just beat everybody up. And you, you're how old, Kobe? I'm 27. And Dustin, how old? 36. And Caitlin, I'll break a rule and ask how old you are, even though you're not supposed to ask the ladies how old they are. It's fine. I'm 29. Okay, so 29, 27. Uh, Body wise, you're probably doing. Dustin, is it affecting you? Do you feel it more? You know than. Starting with the age, starting to get up there a little bit more. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little tired. Maybe I stretch a little bit more than everybody else. Okay. Um, yeah. Even with you, Colby and Kaylin, have you noticed like from five years ago, is it starting to beat you up a little bit? Oh my goodness, uh, <laughs> my body hey, is, I, is a mess. I mean, because, mine uh, is not that bad, but mine is like a separate because when I started wrestling, I was significantly heavier, so I was probably like 325 pounds, and I recently lost like a hundred and probably 30, 140 pounds. So for me, if anything, I feel like my body's the best it's ever felt. But I think that's just because before it was just like, I would take, you know, these falls and it was like, I would hit the ground, which is already as painful as possible. But then like all of my weight would crush me. So for me, wrestling bigger was so much more painful than nowadays. I'm like, when people complain like, oh, that's a hard mat. I'm like, oh, this feels like heaven to me. This is so much softer than how it used to feel. So Mine's a little bit different, but it does get taxing when you do wrestling all the time, for sure. Yeah, it's easier because you started off as bad as it could be for you personally, and then, yeah, yeah, now it just gets easier every time. I get surprised. Like, I've had matches where I've done something, and I will literally, in the middle of a match, like, wait, did I just, wait, did I just do that? That's, like, genuine shock on my behalf. It's not like a, I'm not pretending. I just didn't know that was going to go that way half the time. Caitlin, how much did wrestling play a part in you losing that weight? It honestly wasn't even wrestling. It was COVID. I just got so bored and you couldn't go anywhere and do anything. So like going outside was like the only thing to do. So I would just go on like jogs every day. Um, And then I was just like, why not try to be healthy? You have nothing else to do right now. So it just was kind of like COVID forced me to just get my, get my life and health together. 
And Colby, you're saying you're you're of the three, you're probably the most beat up, beat up the most. Oh my goodness! So uh, yeah, so uh, in addition to my heavy wrestling schedule, so of the 16 matches I wrestled in April, half of them were uh, hardcore or death matches, as we call them, where we'll use uh, stuff like barbed wire, uh, thumbtacks, glass panes, light tubes. Um, underneath this this uh, this nice dress shirt is a threshold of scars <laughs> on my back and my arms, and uh, like uh, here this one's easily accessible. Oh, that's a good oh one. wow, that is a yeah, good one. Yeah, that's from my, that was deep. Yeah, that piece of barbed wire got caught on my arm from a barbed wire table, and um, <laughs> yeah, it really really got me. I needed ten stitches on the outside and uh, quite a bit on the inside. But I still wrestled the next week. <laughs> <laughs> How often are you doing these intense matches like that? Um, it really varies. It seems really weird because it seems like April and October are my heaviest months for death matches. I don't know what goes down mm. in April and October. <laughs> I think it's tax season and Halloween. <laughs> People got the money in April and then in Halloween, they, everyone's in spooky season. They want to see the blood. Nice. So, uh, but it really picks up then. But I try to make them special because, obviously, like, uh, if, if you go online, it's not going to be very hard to find pictures of me just bleeding buckets. Wow. And, uh, yeah, that obviously takes a lot out of you, both mentally and physically. Sure. Like, uh, a lo- it takes a lot of blood out of me. So uh, I can't do them as a, that much. But uh, April was really, really hard because uh, I was probably doing them almost once or twice a weekend. Dustin, are you going to get, have you been involved in any of those or are you going to? Uh, there, there's no plans, but um, I feel a Keep gravitational pull. <laughs> I feel a gravitational pull from the left of, uh, you know, somebody's planting a seed that maybe they'll be in the in the future. But in in the <laughs> the past weekend, Friday, we had a, a tornado tag team I quit match, which I think may have been the first ever. I've never heard of that before. But typically, tag team match, you can tag your partner. Well, what makes it tornado is there's essentially no tag team it's just two guys fighting two other guys uh which essentially means there's no rules so in that match there were some chairs there was a a, a door uh so someone was thrown through a door a few chair shots so maybe that was my my dipping my toes into that world that well, you, so Kayla, are you involved in these any of these types of matches so i've done hardcore matches and i love hardcore matches i've not done a death match but i have sworn my first death match to colby and i said if i were to do one it would only be with colby <laughs> to to start that journey so i definitely really want to do one uh if there's any promotions out there here in this i want to put us on you know hey uh but no i would definitely be interested in doing one but again i would if colby would be the, the only person i think i trust starting out to do one and colby your name is your name Oh yes, that's my that's my real government name. Uh, I didn't make it make it up, unfortunately. Uh, it was given to me. Uh, my dad used his his name, Steve Carino, so uh, it, it felt easy. And plus, like Colby Carino, it's got like the right syllables to clap with, yeah. you know. Sure. So I was like, ah, I could just keep it. And Kate Marie, is that your character name or is that your real name? So I tried having a fake name when I started out, but everyone I trained with that I would end up working with kept calling me my real name in matches. So I didn't want my governmental last name out there. So my first and middle name is Caitlin Murray. So I just stuck with Caitlin Murray. So Dustin, you're you're the lone one here. I, I'm the lone one. Yeah, I think so. Sawdust Meals. That's right. Sawdust. Uh, I, I wrestle under the name Sawdust. Oh, you're, um, you're breaking character. You're uh, telling everyone your name's not actually oh, Sawdust. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, there's so and is that a play on Dustin, the, the, the dust and the Dustin? So, it, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm from Maine. Okay. Um, so, Maine at one point, lumber capital of the world, right? Logging industry, Paul Bunyan. Um, there's some heritage there. But also, with, with respect to professional wrestling, um, there's some historical precedent that wrestling was done on sawdust with nothing but a tarp. Um, so, there's a connection there. And then if you look internationally, I think Switzerland has uh, Schwingen, which is sawdust wrestling, which is wrestling on sawdust. Um, so that's special to me on those, those two areas. I mean, I'm paying respect to where I'm from, and I'm also kind of paying respect to what we do. Kobe, are you ever jealous of the people with characters? And you thought, man, if I could have just come up with that, that would have been great. <sighs> Dude, all the time. <laughs> I just wish I could be keen. I wish I could be six foot nine, wear a mask, have long hair, and just choke slam people. But no. But no. I am unfortunately five foot ten. 
175 pounds, and I must do a lot of cool moves and work really hard to, to be a good professional wrestler. Yeah, you can't teach tall. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Caitlin? Are you jealous of any characters out there? Oh, I'm no, I'm the same as Colby. I'm jealous of anyone who like displays any form of athleticism because as he's complaining about his stature, I am a literal like five foot five, two hundred plus pound. Like I, my legs, like when I stand at the ropes, sometimes the ropes are like at my like eyeballs, <laughs> and I'm like I have to run these things or like I'll wrestle people. Like we mentioned, Ryan Galeone is our champion now, and I remember you know, getting ready, like getting in the crowd and I turn around to look at him and I'm straight like staring at his nipples. Like he's just that much taller than me. And I'm like, it's gonna be a long night for me for sure. Um, so anybody who can jump and be athletic, I just, I desire to be them. I'm Brian North from News Channel 12, News and Sports Anchor, and you're listening to the Paper Boys Podcast. Let's get into a little bio here, Caitlin. Born and raised, and what were you into in school and all that jazz? Yeah, so I was actually born and raised in East, well, Hartford, Connecticut. I moved to East Hartford, Connecticut when I went to high school. And I actually went to college because I wanted to be a NASCAR engineer. Um, and I, I mean, I watched wrestling growing up, but again, growing up, you never saw girls that looked like me on there. I mean, again, I'm sure I'm. I'm a thicker girl that just, like, I never in my mind, though I loved watching wrestling, I never thought, like, that was something I was capable of doing. I didn't play sports. I wasn't athletic. I it just I wasn't in theater. Like, I just was, like, I just hung out and read books and didn't really do much. Um, and then I went to school in North Carolina and I ended up completely changing my major to sport management. And I was like, man, I love working in sports. So I ended up moving to Charlotte, North Carolina, um, and I was working for NASCAR, and I had a girl who was one of my employees. Ask, she was asking me what she should do for college because she wanted to major in one thing, and her parents wanted her to do something different. And I remember her asking, well, what do you want to do? Like, what's your dream? If you could do anything, what would you do? And she said her answer. She said, what about you? And then I said, well, I always wanted to be a wrestler. But, like, obviously, that's not, like, a thing. And she goes, well, why, why haven't you tried? And I don't know why, but when she said it, it kind of was like, I felt called out, and I was like, dang, that one hurt right there. Um, and I didn't, again, have really much else going on besides work. I was in grad school as well at the time, so I had enough on my plate. And, again, I was 325 pounds, and I was like, there's no way I can wrestle. But something was like, just just go sit in and try it. So I messed, I looked on Google, um, and George South, with his super beautiful old-fashioned website page, popped up. And... Um, I had messaged him, and he uh, said, hey, honey, meet me at a Bojangles. Let's talk about it. And um, told me all about Jesus and how much he loves wrestling and how great it was and how it didn't matter what I looked like. I could do it if I wanted to. Um, so I came to a training, and I remember seeing, like, someone hit the mat and the noise it made, and I almost just walked right back out. I was like, there's not a chance I can do that. Um, and let me not be clear. I sucked really, really bad at first. Um, I remember one time I even trained with Colby, and Colby asked me to do something I just face planted, and I remember being so embarrassed. I was like, oh, my God, these people are going to think I should just, like, quit. Um, but thankfully, like I said, COVID happened, and I, I was able to get more in shape, and then I started traveling more, um, and I started meeting more people through wrestling. Um, and so it's just kind of just taken off from there. Just kind of got called out on what I wanted to do and then did it, but... I think it's crazy. I'm glad I got back into it because, again, I hadn't really watched it since I was a child when I grew up. But then, like, getting back into it now, and especially on the indie scene, seeing how much, like, diversity there is now in women's wrestling and seeing how, like, any show, like, you can't, like, before it was always, like, these super beautiful supermodels and who couldn't wrestle. Or now you have girls who go out there who are buffer than every other guy on the show and who can pick them up and throw them over the rope like it's nothing. And it's, it's just great to see how far it's come, and I'm so glad that I stuck with it and got to do it, and, and now doing and getting to be a part of that a little bit. So it's been a fun journey for me, for sure. That's awesome. How about you, Dustin? Born, raised, what were you into as a kid? Yeah, um, but before that, I, w I just wanted to say one thing. I know uh, Caitlin was kind of addressing some maybe insecurity um, with the training process, and with and with Carolina Wrestling Academy, one of the, the great things there 
is that we recognize everyone's um, individual individual fear or individual ability. Um, one person might be just trying to roll forward. And if we recognize that that's challenging for them, that's difficult for them, they get just as much praise as the person who does a backflip. Because on the, on the you know individual level, we realize the, the you know emotional mountain they're coming overcoming is the same in both of those scenarios. So um, it, it's not like that at all with Carolina Wrestling Academy. Um, from every step of the way, you're you're celebrated for you know achieving you know every, every next step of sure. becoming a professional wrestler. But for myself, yes, grew up in Maine uh, as a amateur wrestler, wrestled in middle school, high school, um, big fish, small pond. I was a state champion up there in high school. What weight? Uh, 152 pounds. That's a good. That's a solid. Solid a weight, weight. Solid weight. That's true. A lot of density there. That's uh, a lot of density. Yeah. It's a combination of strength and agility. Sure. You're not really leaning one way or the other. Those are good so, wrestlers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but no, no college scholarships being thrown around up in in Maine. Mm. Uh, I I joined the service. Which I'm sure you could make some connections where I'm, I'm down on the, <laughs> the Crystal Coast. Japan thing. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then with the professional wrestling, I feel like uh, I've this thing has crossed my path so many times. The, the first time I was in Okinawa, Japan, walking down uh, the street, I see a bar and I look inside and they're watching uh, professional wrestling. It just kind of it's a moment that somehow is locked in my memory of like I should have went in there and said something, didn't. A few years later, um, I don't know, 10 years later, I'm in Germany, and I go to Nuremberg. I'm watching Alex Wright's promotion. Alex Wright was a world championship wrestling WCW, mid-'90s television guy, uh, has his championship, uh, has his promotion in Germany. I'm watching the shows. I, op- I had an opportunity to train. I trained one day, and then I started doing the math on what my budget is. It's like, oh, it's two hours one way. Um, I didn't take advantage, and now I, I feel a ton of shame saying that because I've listened to the stories of so many independent wrestlers that will regularly travel two, three hours one way um, to train. And I, what an opportunity I passed by. I go to Okinawa again, I, I alluded to, started to get something going, COVID derailed it. So I feel like I'm on my last leg, you know, one with opportunities and then my age too, right? I'm mid thirties, like I can't wait too much longer to try this out. Kobe, did you have any choice or were you, were you destined to be a wrestler? Uh, I, I definitely had a choice, but I was always destined to be a wrestler and like, that's all, all I ever wanted to do. So, uh, I, I embraced it. Like, uh, I mean, you can find, uh, I say I started wrestling when I was 12 years old, but that's when I really started like training and like actually putting an effort into it. But you can find matches when I was like four or five years old with my dad and stuff, like where we were a tag team beating people up. You find a, a video of me beating up, uh, Masato Tanaka and Shigeru Otani in Japan when I was like six years old. It's, um. It's been all all I've ever wanted, and like uh, like a lot, I have a lot of different experience than uh, than most people with wrestling because I was always around it, and like the wrestling that I watched wasn't the wrestling that was on TV for the most part because I would watch what my dad did, and my dad didn't like wrestle on WWE or uh, I mean he was in ECW back in the nineties, but when that uh, folded in two thousand one, it it was all independent and for him traveling the world to uh, go to promotions and stuff. And that's, that's what I watched. So I had this specific love for independent wrestling that uh, it's just like, it's instilled within me and more, more so than like the, the, like, I don't even, I'm not, I don't even want to blow up the spot, but like, I don't even watch what my dad uh, produces on TV, you know, (laughs) because I, I just, I don't know. I, I like the the smaller feel. I like I, I I like the intimacy with the fans, and I like to create memories and moments for people that like, you know. I want to make mo- memories and moments that are last forever with the kid that's never seen wrestling before. He's coming to his first show ever, and uh, he he gets like an up close experience with professional wrestling and that could shape his whole life i've had people come up to me even at my age i'm 27 i've had people come up to me and that makes me feel really old it goes like man like you inspire me to be a wrestler i'm like oh my goodness how old am i like <laughs> it's getting to the point where there's there's wrestlers out there that have been wrestling uh, that that i've been wrestling longer than they've been alive and that's and that's crazy to think about that i've had an influence on people like that and um 
and that's just through independent wrestling and like uh i've don't uh, i've been on like i've had a couple a cup of tea in, in wwe i've done a couple matches here and there i've been in, uh, in nwa obviously and have been there for the past few years uh ring of honor when i was like 18 years old so i've had like these uh like these flashes on on these bigger stages but most of my name is built from from working these smaller independent shows and traveling the country and that's super cool to me who do you, you think's had the most influence on you? I, I imagine a dad is pretty high up on the list. Oh yeah, like uh, in a, in a lot different of a way than most people would imagine because uh, he actually didn't train me to wrestle. It was actually uh, given to the that duty was given to one of his best friends, Mike Keener, who was a referee for ECW. He still continues to be a referee on the independent circuit in the Northeast, but. Um, he would train me before every show that we went to and uh like when i was going to ring of honor i was wrestling with every single person bef- uh, that would get in the ring with me before the show and would uh be willing to beat up a, a 12 and 13 year old kid in the ring and not, not really beat me up but but like but like show me that like how to how to do this and like like uh like a true professional wrestler and not not baby me you know and um it, that was i feel like that was super important not being babied uh, even though i was that young how about you, Dustin? Who's been some of the biggest influences on you so far? Um, well, first it would be Kobe with uh, the training that he's provided. Uh, I think the first steps in Okinawa, Japan, there's a gentleman, Brian Cannon, um, who'd spent about 20 years wrestling in Japan. He's Australian. Um, so in terms of the, the technique-based, um, those have been huge uh, huge foundations, and I, I'd extend that also to, to Ryan Galleon, our, our current champion. And how about you, Caitlin, who's been a big influence on you? Um, I would at least say one of the probably the biggest is one of my good friends, Dane Riley. He was probably the first person I would say, like, even at my biggest size, like, saw potential and, like, would put his name out there for a lot of people who were very hesitant. Um, but I definitely say, like, I think Colby and his whole family have. I mean, I go to Colby more than I probably go to anybody else for wrestling advice. I appreciate him. I think more than he even knows. And I put him over to anybody who ever mentions him because he's done so much for me and not just like getting me opportunities of building my confidence, but I feel just as comfortable going to his father with, with a question that maybe he'd be, be better able to uh, answer or even his aunt is the rest of while in danger. And I've done sessions with her where we'll just talk and have girl talk over the thing about wrestling and women's wrestling and like experiences she may have a better uh, viewpoint to give me from so they've definitely been a huge impact on me for sure as well and obviously my trainer George South he's just a legend everywhere he goes and a, a personality and always there cheering me on so we love George. Lightning round <laughs> most popular your favorite wrestlers of all time go Kobe. Uh, John Cena X-Pac and Davey Richards. Dustin. Oh no, top three. Um, <laughs> Is that impossible? I know. Uh, how do you pick? Um, Bret Hart, Gold Dust, and Chad Cable. How about you, Caitlin? Uh, I'd probably go Trish Stratus, uh, Eddie Guerrero, and then Batista. Well, thank you all so much for coming in, enlightening us, and telling us about this. And uh, hey, if you're in Carter County, the last Friday of every month. No, I've, I've got, I mean, like Cameron, he's not. He would love this. Yeah, this would be this this would be something that could put him on a trajectory of you know getting sure. interested in something that he's never sure. been never been exposed to. Yeah, extremely excited to go to one of these. Take, take your kids. You might be ra- you might be raising a future wrestler. That's right. Exactly. You, you never know who's going to be the next uh, Jay Malachi or uh, Patrick Scott writing for, uh, the star the stories for tomorrow. You know. Nice. Thank you all so much for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank Thank you you guys for having us on.